I'm moving on to uh, more solutions. Tim, uh, what innovative housing solutions are you seeing that also can help seniors? There's really two areas that we see. One gets to this issue that we've all been talking about, um, about who you live with, who, who can help you. Is it family members? Is it friends and, and others? And the other has to do with kind of more the physical, um, the physical housing. So for, for, regarding living arrangements, not as much in this area, but especially in other countries and other parts of, of this country, we're seeing um, more intergenerational programs. So college students, for instance, living with seniors, in return for free room and board, helping to take care of the house, helping with transportation and, and other things. Um, there's a, uh, a senior property, independent living in Cleveland, that does that with Case Western Reserve, where the music students live there for free, and in return, they give musical performances. And so you get this kind of help. The, the seniors don't feel as isolated as, as they might. So there's, um, so there's that area, but I don't see us doing quite as much of that uh, locally. And then there's those family-shared living arrangements. And while on one hand, We've seen you know, families kind of fall apart a little bit, and as Kate said, um, the family members sometimes are as much of a problem as, as a solution. And uh, if you, in 2000, 15% of the US lived in a multi-generational household. And in 2016, that had increased to 20%. So we're almost back to levels from 1950. Now, a lot of that I don't think has to do with wanting to take care of seniors. It has to do with economic reasons. Sometimes the kids need the, the grandma to move back in to help take care of the grandkids, it's financial reasons. We've seen seniors in our affordable properties move out to live with their children so the children's house wouldn't be foreclosed on. They needed the finances. Not something the senior really uh, wanted, but we're seeing those kind of forced relationships. It's hard to tell whether that's a benefit or not. They might be in the same home and not helping out, um, but it, it's certainly at least a trend. On the design side, there's two things that we see um, nationally, and especially on the coast where housing is more expensive. So one is in-law suites. So if you, one of the issues, transportation issues is, if you're taking care of a parent, and that parent lives 20 minutes away from you, that's a lot of back and forth. It's certainly much more convenient if they're living close by. So once they're in there, people looking at, well, how can I change my house to give them some privacy? There are companies out there, for instance, that will take a two-car garage, turn it into an apartment for you, and so that they can kind of have some, uh, some separation there. The other one is what I call tiny cottages, or, and some people call these granny pods, where it's actually not attached to the house, it's a prefab um, house that's fully wired and gen has you know, a shower and everything in it, but goes in the backyard. And while there are a lot of zoning issues around that, we're in places like San Francisco and some big cities, we're seeing more and, and more of that. So, it's, uh, it's giving them, a, the seniors, a place to live that's hopefully close to the help that they need so that you're, not, you're at least not having that drive time every day.